Hello and welcome to another day in Mr. White's math class. Today we're going to talk about two-step equations and how to solve them. We've been working through some similar questions in class and we've been solving them, but today I wanted to take the time to really go through the detailed steps of what we're really doing and even the names of some of the things that we're doing. So let's take a look at one problem today and really go in depth with what we're doing so that we can pull out the deepest understanding that we can get out of just this one problem. So again, we are solving two-step equations, two-step equations. So this first one, or this first one, this, this problem that we're doing says 32 equals 2x minus 28. And what we're really trying to say is that some number, some number for x, when multiplied by 2 and then subtracted by 18, will end up being 32. So some number, we don't know what that number is yet, some number, if we multiply it by 2 and subtract it by 18, it's going to give us 32. We need to find out what that number is. And so I told you, we use these things called inverse operations. And inverse operation just means to do the opposite. So we are going to do the opposite. So right now, we are going to do the opposite. going to do the opposite. Uh, so remember, when we say do the opposite, what we're really saying is everything. From the order of operations, we're going to go backwards. From what we see, we're going to go backwards. We're going to do everything in reverse order, or we're going to do the reverse of everything. That is where we get the term for inverse operations. So when we look at this, we would normally multiply 2 times some number, then we would subtract 18. That's the normal order of operations. But because we're doing it in reverse, we are going to start with this subtraction. So we need to do the inverse operation of subtraction. So we need to do the opposite of subtraction. That's our first step. What is the opposite of subtraction? We are going to add 18. So we just did an inverse operation. We just did an inverse operation. Let me write this in orange. Uh, we did an inverse operation. Oh, if only I could spell correctly. I was thinking opposite and I wrote operation. Thank goodness I have a spell. Do a light. Okay, let that dry off. Inverse operation. And the inverse operation that we just did was we added, we add. 18, but we don't just add it to one side because we have this thing called the 
property of equality. So we add 18 to both sides. And what do I mean by both sides? Because everything that we have to do, we have to understand what we're talking about. What does both sides even mean? Well, both sides means both sides of the equation. So here's the left side of the equation, and here's the right side of the equation. Both sides means that I have this imaginary line that runs down, and I have two sides of my equation. So if I add 18 to this side, to the right side, I need to add 18 to the other side. This is called a property of equality. This is called a property of equality. And what it means to have a property of equality is that you do the same thing to both sides because that, that is how we get away with this next step. So we add 18 to both sides. This is called a this is called the addition. This is called the addition property of equality. All that means is that we add to keep things equal. We add to keep things equal. <clears throat> Once we do this, we can cancel this. Why do we cancel that? Because 18, sorry, 18 minus 18 or negative 18 plus 18 gives us a zero. And we don't have to write that we're subtracting or adding zero because that is redundant. We don't have to write that we add or subtract zero. We just do it all the time. Right now, I'm adding zero uh, amount of calories to my diet because I'm not eating. So when we add zero, we don't have to write it. So we don't have to write anything here. So that's why we just cancel it out. And then we drop down what's remaining because we still have a 2x here. We drop this down and we have 2x equals 32 plus 18. 8 plus 32 is 40 plus 10 is 50. So 2x equals 50. So now what am I saying? I haven't changed the information. All I've done is change the way that I understand the information. I needed to know what number times 2 minus 18 gave me 32. Well, when I add the 18 over, now I understand it a little better. What I really need to find out is what number times 2 will give me 50. What number times 2 will give me 50? I know your wheels are spinning, and you might even already have the answer, but we can do this algebraically. What is happening here? Remember we said it's what number, sorry, what number times 2 minus 18. So what number times 2? So what's happening between these? It is multiplication. We need to do the opposite. So we're going to do another inverse operation. We're going to do another inverse operation. This time I spelled it correctly. And we are going to divide because what's happening here is that we are multiplying. We do the opposite. So we are going to divide 2 from both sides. And 
remember, both sides mean both sides of the equation. So on both sides of the equal sign, we are going to divide on both sides. So we divide by 2. We divide by 2. <clears throat> on the right side, this will cancel. This will cancel out. Why? Because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 1 times any number doesn't change that number. I am exactly 1 times the same age that I currently am right now. Because I'm the same age that I am right now. I'm not increasing when I multiply by 1. So I don't have to write it. I just drag down my last little piece of information of x and because i do it to both sides this is a property of equality and this property of equality is called the division property of equality because i divided this is the division property of equality, which means whatever I did to this side, I did also to that side. I divided by both sides. Now is my last step, 50 divided by 2 is 25. And now I understand what I'm doing. Now I understand what I'm doing. I am doing the opposite. Every step of the way, I'm looking for what is the opposite order of operation. Then I'm looking at what do I see. I see a minus 18, so I'm going to add 18. And whatever I do to the one side, I do to the other. And then I just bring down what's left. I bring down my answer. Then I look for what's my next thing that's happening, and I do the opposite. And when I do the opposite to this side, I have to do the opposite to this side as well. That means that this side cancels, and I'm left with x. The whole time, I was trying to find out what is the number for x. I have now found it. 25 times 2 gives me 50. And then if I subtract 18 from 50, I get 32. That is solving equations. I hope that this video was extremely helpful. I hope that this is what enables you to continue to uh, move forward and to thrive during this time. You have now focused your attention on understanding all of the details of what we're doing, that we're doing inverse operations, which just means to do the opposite, that we are doing whatever we do to one side, we are doing the exact same to the other side of the equal sign. And then we develop an answer to a question that we already knew. We just are writing it down algebraically. Hopefully this was helpful and this helps you to continue to understand how to solve problems, how to solve real world problems by undoing what was already done. In order to figure things out, sometimes we have to retrace our steps. We've heard that before. That's what we're doing in math. We're retracing our steps. We're going backwards so that we can find that answer. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time in Mr. White's math class.